Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Andy, the head coach uh, at the University of Miami. So I guess first off, um, you know, you guys had your ACC meet pretty much as normal. Um, can you take me through just kind of how that went for y'all? Yeah. Um, ACC's headed there. Uh, lots of excitement. Um, you know, lots of lead up. And uh, certainly we did a lot of things that we haven't done in the past. I uh, had a lot, I think, that, you know, we felt really good about, but, you know, certainly didn't hit on all cylinders. Um, and, you know, I think as is true with all competitors, the, the, uh, the ones that you feel like you're just short of, um, those, are the, those stick with you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the successes, you, you got to, continue to put those in front of you. Uh, you know, I think we had a real successful season. Uh, in, some, in some cases, actually, the success that we had during the season, I think maybe even escalated the, the expectations more. Um, and, you know, now that we've had a chance to step back, you know, it's a little easier to see that, I think. Um, but, yeah, we definitely we didn't do everything we wanted to do or felt like we could do certainly I think came away very hungry for the future. Yeah. And so um, can you take me through the next few weeks after that, I guess, leading up to eventually, you know, the college shutting down the team disbanding for now? Yeah. So, um, you know, came away from ACC's and uh, got home and, you know, that, that week was, was fairly normal. Um, we're a women's only program. So, uh, then at that point, you know, I did have the, I do have the fortune of not staying in, in Greensboro, um, you know, straight through for two weeks, waiting for the men to come, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And so we went back, had our, our team meeting, our post ACC team meeting, you know, kind of laid out a plan for the next week, which for many of them, you know, that's just a, a week off, a week to decompress, a, a week to, to reconnect with with school uh, it's a really big thing there um, but also had uh, Zori Mason uh, decided she wanted to go to a last chance meet so uh, kind of working through that with her and we also have some international swimmers who had or they thought they had uh, trials meets coming up uh, at that point you know we thought that that's what they had and so you know they, they're like banging on the door saying coach let's, let's keep this going um, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go to whether it's Spanish, Spanish open or Canadian trials or, you know, whatever. Um, so had a, a good group in the pool that week. And, um, I always find that that's, that's a challenging time, uh, for teams because you, you just, you enter into a time when there's a lot of different agendas and you keep it going as a team. Um, but, you know, it's just constantly reminding like, okay, this is our team agenda. And in that lies a bunch of different uh, ways of going about it. Um, and then I went with Zori to Athens, Georgia for the, the last chance meet. Mm -hmm. And that's when, right as that was coming up, that's when, you know, it started to, you know, the coronavirus thing was starting to gain a little more, more momentum in the States. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking through the airport with her and actually took my daughter with us on that trip too. Uh, and we're walking through the airport. It just felt a little different. And, uh, you know, I mentioned to her, I said, you know, just, I, I'm not an alarmist by nature, but I said, you know, just make sure you're washing your hands and, and just kind of be aware of who you're around and, and different things. And that that's a little out of, out of character for me because I, I'm not really an alarmist, just kind of a roll with the guy. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, uh, we went to the last chance meet. Zori had another great meet. Uh, she, she really put it together well last two weeks of the season, set school records for us. And uh, knocking on the door, making NCAA is certainly something um, that's still on our, on our to-do list for. Um, but uh, at the meet, you know, it's, it's pretty much business as usual. And back home, the people training, business as usual. And then when we got back, you know, that's when things really started to unfold. Mm -hmm. And 
let's see, that week was then spring break for us. Okay. So a lot of our, a lot of our people were scattered and, um, you know, you started hearing about like what's going to happen with, with some of these competitions, no fans, um, et cetera. And, uh, if I, if I have my weeks, right, it's kind of blurring together, but, uh, I believe that was then the week when eventually uh, NCAAs were, were canceled. You know, I'm a big sports fan, so, you know, basketball teams are being pulled off the court um, as they're warming up. And, um, you know, one of, our, one of our people who stayed in town is a Spanish swimmer, Carmen San Nicolas. And, uh, and, you know, I think it was Wednesday of that week, I called her into the office and I was like, Carmen, I don't know about the Spanish Open. Um, like, you know, I don't know that the university is going to approve us, you know, paying for your flight there. I don't think I'm going to be allowed to go with you. And if you go, I don't know that you're going to be able to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in hindsight, that was, that was, that decision was going to be made for us. But, um, so yeah, uh, I think that, that kind of, let us up and so then we had people who were on spring break who didn't haven't come back mm -hmm. um, we have people who uh, came back just to get things and, and leave we one of the th things that was really cool I think for for me as a head coach is so many of them were making those decisions based on swimming um, and so you know they're writing back saying like coach if if the pool's open there I'm coming back but if the pool is not going to be open there, then there's this community pool here where I can still swim and I'll stay here. And, uh, you know, that was the, from the full spectrum of the team, right? From, you know, the people who have the highest accolades, the, the fastest performances to the people who are at the other end. And, you know, to, to see that drive of the team, that intrinsic drive of each person, that was really refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I'm sure, you know, swimmers are still worried about training and, you know, it's like you can't really be out of the pool that long, but also, um, you know, I think for a lot of swimmers, it's like a comfort, right? They, they, it's a, it's, it's a place of normalcy and, right. um, yeah, that is, that's, that is really refreshing and really cool. Um, yeah. It's one, one of the things that, um, that struck me actually today is, you know, a lot of sports have seasons and they're in season or they're out of season. Yep. And, um, you know, I think ours is a sport that the seasons really blend together. You know, there's very little like out of season. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I, I would, I would be willing to say that this has probably affected our, our athletes and our sport a little more from a day to day lifestyle situation. That and the fact that, you can't, there's no way to simulate being in the water. Right. <laughs> so if, you're, if you're a land athlete, you can go out for a run and there's some simulation there, but um, mm. there's no way to simulate being in the water. Yeah. No kidding. Which, I mean, I feel like, yeah, pools, pools are closing more and more, you know, it's like pe people have had to go from 50 meters to 25 meters to 25 yards to 15 yards, you know, yeah. the, yeah and you know even even now the smaller ones i feel like are are closing but um so so what has your day to day maybe the last week or even yesterday looked like you know from the university of miami head coach perspective yeah that's uh i mean that's changed mm -hmm. it seems like it's changed a month's worth of change in the last week yeah um, but right off the bat uh you know i've got a tremendous assistant coach, Tanya Gulianen, and, and uh, she and I right away were like, all right, if we can't be on the deck, which eventually, you know, when the ACC came through and said, you know, no, no one can coach, basically. Mm -hmm. um, well, that doesn't mean that, that we can stop advancing. And so, you know, we went in the office and, uh, and started we did an online coaching clinic we're still working through it uh training analysis recruiting analysis organizational things things like that but we pretty much kept coming in the office um you know i, I don't know maybe as a as the 
the head coach, the supervisor. Maybe I should have sent her home more, but um, it's again just not in my nature. Uh, but eventually, this weekend, uh, I was like, "Hey, like, if you're more comfortable, maybe you should stay home." And so she, this week now we've started working remotely, um, but it's still a lot of like, just there's a lot we can do still, um, and uh, so it's a lot of virtual stuff. Um, it's a lot of in the house which uh, my, it's an adjustment for my family. Um, you know, I think the very first Monday that I didn't spend four hours on the pool deck, uh, normally 8.30 at night, if I get horizontal, I'm asleep. And uh, you know, that night it was like 10 o'clock and I was like, all right, what, what are we gonna do? Like, what else is there to do around the house? And my wife just looked at me like, okay, you gotta figure this out. Because you're <laughs> driving us nuts. <laughs> so, your daily life, um, you know, it's changing, evolving, finding little projects to do mm -hmm. when I'm not, you know, working and we're redoing the office. So, our home office. So, learning how to put a floor in and hang in and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, has, has this, has all this time at home given you any? new goals i guess outside of being a coach just things you would like to get done other than swimming uh my gut reaction is no um <laughs> you know if anything i would say it has it has confirmed my my passion for coaching and you know it's like you take something away that you love and you just makes you want to do it more mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I, the office thing that we've got going on, that's that's at the forefront right now. And uh, again, my wife just asked me the other day, like, okay, when we finish this, which will probably be at the end of this week, like, what are you going to do next? Because you got to have something. Um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how, about, how about you? I know you travel a lot from what I gather <laughs> watching, watching Swim Swam and things. Is, must be similar for you. You must be feeling yeah. good. Enough. Yeah. So um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I've, I've reacted very well to this and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I, I haven't felt um, stir crazy at all really yet. Um, and maybe that's because I normally do travel so much <laughs> that, um, that uh, this, you know, the the last two weeks I've been I've I, I'm at my girlfriend's place and we've just been kind of holed up here and um and it's it's been pretty nice you know I've been doing a lot of I'm still I still get to interact with the swimming community via these interviews and that's been really really great um getting to you know just connect with everyone and hear their thoughts and and also, um, just, you know, Swim Swam is still very much busy with all the reporting we're doing because the news is changing every hour, you know? Um, and, uh, but other than that, it's like, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of TV. I really enjoy reading. Um, I like cooking. And so just kind of being a homebody for a while has been nice. I'm, I'm kind of curious if I will get stir crazy after a while. Um, but yeah, it's like right now, I don't know, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's been kind of nice. Yeah. And you're in Austin, right? I'm in Austin. Yeah. Um, I, I, from what I read, we're getting a, uh, not a statewide lockdown, but a, I forget the phrase, but like a stay in thing, like an official, everyone has to stay in not all non-essential businesses need to close. Um, yeah. So we're good luck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what is, what is it like in Miami right now? Yeah, it's been, um, it, it has, I would say gradually, uh, I actually haven't been out too much recently. Um, you know, mm -hmm. have forced myself to, you know, follow the, the instructions. Um, but uh, when I have gone out, you know, traffic is a lot less. You know, <laughs> it's one of our, yeah. our big issues. 
Um, and it, so it has been a lot less. Uh, we ran to the store yesterday and uh, it was at like five o'clock. I would have never done that uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, two weeks ago, but mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's, it's calming down. You know, it's Miami's not necessarily a, a culture that's known for being great rule followers. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, there's just an influence of so many different cultures here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, I think different cultures take those, those warnings and those rules and that advice in different ways. Um, and uh, so that's been interesting to see. From what I've heard from outside people, um, we've gotten a lot of like bad press of people being, you know, out on the water and in big boats and um, mm -hmm. you know, not really keeping social distance. But I, I'm not part of that. Yeah. Hey, well, doing your part, right? Those days are behind me, even if, <laughs> even if I wasn't following the advice. <laughs> um, oh, nice. I'm, that's good to hear. Uh, okay, so switching gears a little bit, um, you have been the team manager for the last two Olympic teams. Yes. Um, so I guess, first of all, can you just tell me what what went into that for the last two Olympics? How, how do you get to be in a position like that? And, and what does that position entail? Man, I wish I could tell you. Um, <laughs> it's everything. It's a whirlwind. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot. But, um, you know, it is something that some of my mentors, some of my predecessors kind of instilled in me. Uh, Greg Werner was someone who did that for USA Swimming. Uh, for a long time and I coached under him for a number of years and uh, so he was the one who really sparked it and uh, the process also has changed a lot through USA Swimming over the years so the process that started out when I was doing that um, and first trying to get into it back in like 2000 is much different than it is now okay um, yeah. and uh, and then I went and coached for Eddie Stinnett at SMU and he was an Olympic team manager mm -hmm. um, in 2008 so, you know, that kind of continued my, my drive to do it. Um, and then, you know, I was given a chance. I was fortunate that I was the first chance I was given to do it was for a duel in the pool um, okay. in, uh, in Manchester. And as a college assistant at that time, it was like just doing my job, at, you know, for a different team. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I was right in my wheelhouse. And I was also fortunate that the the staff on that trip were you know the the people who were making making the big decisions mm -hmm. um you know so you know at that time the national team director was mark schubert so he was on the trip lindsey mentenko was on the trip and then the coaching staff was like frank bush and jack bowerly and bob bowman and i mean it was uh you know the eddie reese was on the trip so you know that i i certainly had a great respect that it was if I could do a good job there, that would help me. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, it's partly being in the right place at the right time, and then you know, as you tell tell your athletes, taking advantage of the opportunities that you're given. Yeah. Um, and so you know, just really tried to to do a good job at it, and um, then that led to another trip, another trip, and then uh, got to do London, um, and then and then I thought that was you know I thought that was my go on the merry-go-round and you know I, I loved it and and was very very thankful for the opportunities and then uh, and then when I think it was in like 2014 um, now Frank Bush was the national team director and he and I have a great relationship and um, so then he he came here to Miami and um, and totally shocked me took me out to dinner and uh, asked me if I would do it for 2016 and um, so you know, you can't say no. Yeah. You know, it's like, I actually, I, I was not in that mindset then. And, you know, when he asked me, I said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to have to think about it, talk to, talk to the university about it and, you know, process it a little bit. And I, I really was debating, but every time I thought, well, maybe no, I thought, well, what am I going to do? Call him and say, I don't want to be a U.S. Olympic team member. Like that. Those words can't come out of my mouth. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, you know, that's kind of how it came about um, both mm -hmm. times. Um, and then, you know, 
what it is is really it's a lot you know i'm sure usa swimming probably has a a quote unquote definition mm -hmm. um i don't know that i've ever really seen the definition or you know, if i if i do I, I didn't really focus too much on that for me you know it can really be be boiled down to that role is their primary thing is to put the athletes in the position to focus solely on swimming, the coaches in position to focus solely on coaching, the med staff in position to focus solely on, you know, taking care of everybody. Um, you know, just to try to knock out every fire, take care of everything, answer every question, give answers even when you don't know the answers and then try to make those answers come true. You know, just try to be there for everyone. Um, yeah. And, uh, was sorry you know if if you don't have an answer for this that's fine but that that automatically makes you wonder like was there was there one like fire that you had to put out that at the time you're like how is this going to get resolved oh uh, there are definitely those um probably the first one that comes to mind we were in i think i think this was when we were in vichy for our training camp leading up to london okay. and where's vichy in france okay okay um and so the transportation to the airport we learned like two days before that the buses weren't as big as we thought and you know it was we're trying to move whatever 70 people or 60 people or you know however many right um, to the airport get on this flight to london mm -hmm. have this all laid out and it's like a little wrench and it kind of came and like one of managing the athletes that part is is pretty simple managing the coaches that part can be hard because they're all like they all want to be the head coaches that's uh, what they do that's what they're great at right and you know trying to pull them all together to be you know all one staff that that part can be like a little outside of their nature um and so this information all came through to like everybody all at the same time oh wow and it's like you could almost feel like all the heads in the room all turn and like what are we going to do yeah. and uh so yeah i threw out an answer uh, <clears throat> and everyone left the room and the couple other like people that are involved in that thing which this is not me just working alone either right like i'm one of the managers Mm -hmm. one of the people working on this um they were like i i didn't know we were doing that and i was like well i didn't know we were doing it either but we got to make what i just said come yeah. true yeah um, and so you know it's but that's and the, the whole reason for that is just to try to give the athletes a sense of calm mm -hmm. right it's it's not like <clears throat> that i'm trying to orchestrate something that or you know to my own own horn it's just those situations come up and leading into something like the Olympics, the athletes just want to feel like everything is going as planned. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, you know, really, I think just giving them a sense of that and then either making it come through, come true or giving them a chance to then tell them in a more calm way, uh, you know, the adjustment that's going to be made. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know the news came out this morning officially that the 2020 olympics will be postponed until at least 2000 sometime in 2021 um do you have you know what can you give any insight into what behind the scenes of that postponement uh, might look like or what goes into that i mean no but you know yes like <laughs> yeah i can say just from some of the things i've seen some of the the people i've gotten to work with whether it's the local people you know in brazil or in london or the usa swimming people you know, different things it's a lot um mm -hmm. you know and i you know the great thing is everybody's gonna put the the athlete first and and that's that's a great thing uh, I, it's what i would want to have happen it's what i want to do um, but i do think it's important to really also appreciate the the people working behind the scenes uh 
you know, I think, you know, just from a sense of USA Swimming, there, there are staff members who spend hours and hours and hours, years and years and years planning the training camps. Mm-hmm. And now they have to start all over. Um, and, you know, they've, they've had four years or maybe more planning this. Now they're going to have, we don't know how long. They don't know how long. Mm-hmm. And that's just USA Swimming. Uh, you know, and, and you think about like the people who were going to be living in the village. Like I was thinking today, of, you think back to the Atlanta Olympics, the village there is now dorms at Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure Georgia Tech at that time was planning on using those dorms as soon as the Olympics ended. And you know, mm-hmm. just, just that example shows you like how many dominoes are going to fall yeah. um, from that, that decision. And again, I'm at full support of the decision, whatever is best for the athletes. But, you know, it's just, I think it, that appreciation needs to be there. And um, a, a lot of thanks is going to need to go out, I think, especially, you know, to the U.S. for, for, from our viewpoint to the USA swimming staff, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they got, they got a lot of work ahead of them and they're going to kick ass at it, but um, they, they deserve a big thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sir, I certainly, especially with an example like that, it sounds like, sounds like a lot. Um, any, any closing thoughts that you would like to share? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, kind of along those uh, those lines too you know it's you know you think of like the, the coaching that goes into it and, and some of these coaches I think are very detailed on just you know that four-year plan mm-hmm. um, and timing that out just right fortunately there are also great coaches that are able to make those adjustments mm-hmm. um, but you know it's I think it's an interesting time. I think as, as a swimming community, we can learn a lot from it. Um, you know, we're going to learn like, okay, what happens if we give these athletes a break like this, a uh, break from the water? And, um, you know, how can we learn from that? It, it, will it confirm our traditional model? Will it challenge our traditional model? Um, are we open-minded enough to see it? Um, And, you know, also with the athletes mentally, like what's it going to do for them? Is it going to fuel their fire even more? Is it, you know, and it's a totally different generation, you know, from me, certainly. So, you know, um, how are they going to respond to it? And I think, I think for everybody, just really focusing on the opportunity for growth um, in some way from it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that's that's what that would be my encouragement is like let's find the ways that we can see uh, you know things that we could be doing better um, or things that we're doing great that if they're taken away from us you know it, it it reinforces that those things really matter to us. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you said it all. Um, well, thanks a lot for your time, Andy. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. This was great. I'm happy to happy to get a chance to be on here with you. <laughs> yeah. I feel honored. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank, thank you for, for giving the time, certainly. 